I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. On our program today, meet Buffalo's top cop, Commissioner Joe Grimalia, recently honored for his service to the city. Then, former Channel 2 reporter Mike Igo shares his journey of battling colon cancer with advice that could save your life. That and more, right here, right now, on The Big Picture. everyone and welcome to the program. The Good Government Club of Western New York recently held their annual dinner at Salvatore's to recognize exceptional leaders in our community. The organization is composed of professional Italian-American leaders working in a nonpartisan way to promote community awareness through education and collaboration. Before we meet the honoree for 2023, Judge Frank Caruso explains the mission of the group. Judge Frank Caruso, thank yes. you so much for talking to us. Today. Oh, my pleasure. I know that you have been active and involved in very in many capacities with the Good Government Group. Why don't you like tell us a little bit about your history with them? Well, uh, my history goes back quite a few years because I uh, am chairman of the board of directors of the Federation of Italian American Societies, which is an umbrella group over 30 different Italian American organizations, cultural organizations. The Good Government Club being one of them. So uh, that's how I got connected, in a sense, to the group. And, um, uh, and then back in 2018, I was honored as their person of the year, which was a, a very great honor uh, for me. So, well deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we try. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so over the years, many of the people that belong to the Good Government Club also belong to the Federation and our members of our uh, uh, board of directors and different committees. So that's how we keep in touch. So, you know, we have a number of different, uh, let's say, St. Joseph tables now coming up. Um, but uh, our Italian Heritage Dinner every October, we honor a, a prominent Italian American in the community who's contributed uh, quite a bit. And over the course of the year, there's all different, uh, different Italian cultural events, whether they be plays, musicals, art exhibits, um, food exhibits, so the, the uh, uh, cultural center on Hurdle Avenue uh, has all of that that we get involved with. So. All right, we're going to talk about the food. I yes. knew we were going to get to food <laughs> with you. Uh, what, what, I know you can cook. Yes, yeah. thank you. All right, so what are your favorite dishes? Oh, well, actually, my, my absolute favorite dish is just a simple dish of pasta uh, with sauce and maybe some and the meat that goes with the sauce and, and some meatballs. But, uh, but I also love eggplant and uh, working with that. Um, and your, your basic dishes, the lasagna and, and uh, ravioli and things like that, so. St. Joseph's Day, which we we're talking about in the yes. St. Joseph table, has an interesting uh, history. Yes, yes. You might it's, it, explain. It, it came out of Sicily, actually, and I'm not Sicilian, I'm Calabrese, which is Southern Italian. But it dealt with um, uh, people starving at one point and St. Joseph, uh, people praying to St. Joseph, and uh, suddenly all the seafood fish appear, you know, where they were able to have their lives saved by, uh, by the sudden infestation of fish. And uh, so, and people only had some vegetables they were able to eat. So that's why it's a meatless tradition and a meatless table. And from then on, they shared uh, with everyone uh, every year. People in their, it used to be, people in their homes would have St. Joseph's table and all the neighbors and neighborhood would come and, and share in the food. Now some restaurants locally will host their own St. Joseph tables and uh, it's, it's a wonderful tradition. Yeah. And it's very meaningful uh, mm -hmm. that it's continued over all these years. Yes. That's what's very meaningful. Yes. About it well, I think that's the core of the Italian culture, too, is tradition, and that we don't forget. And there's a lot of other nationalities, too, uh, that like to preserve their traditions. But there's something about the Italian culture that uh, it, it is so strong and meaningful with regards to preserving the history and the culture. And um, family. And family, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. So it, um, it's a way of life. You know, and you want to pass that on, you know, to your children and grandchildren. You're definitely doing your part. Well, thank you. Keeping it going and passing it on. Thank you. We try, and tonight, you know, we honor uh, uh, Commissioner Gramalia, you know, who is an inspiration to Italian Americans all over Western New York, and the way he has conducted himself in such a dignified, professional manner through some horrific events. Uh, 
is something to be admired and, uh, and really makes all of us Italian-Americans very proud. And everybody in Erie County very proud. Yes, absolutely. Let's talk about you, how you got to be a judge, how long you've been, okay. where, you, where your roots are, because I know you're from... The city of Tonawanda originally. Tonawanda. I grew up in the city of Tonawanda. Yep. And uh, I grew up in the city of Tonawanda and uh, uh, went to uh, Tonawanda High School and Buffalo State College and then University of Dayton School of Law. Uh, and uh, got married in 1988 and moved to the town of Tonawanda, where I was there for 20 years. And I practiced law for 12 years at that point, and then there was a vacancy in the uh, town justice position in the town of Tonawanda, and I ran for it and thankfully won. Uh, so I still practice law, and then in between that time I became an acting city court judge in Buffalo as well, so I was juggling three jobs. Uh, and then finally in 2007 I was elected to the, uh, uh, well actually I was appointed at the end of 2006 by the governor to the state Supreme Court and then elected to a full term in 2007. So, and re-elected just in 2021. It's been an so. amazing career. And oh, still thank is. you. Thank you. Well, and I follow in your footsteps. You know, you know, I, you know, you've really been an inspiration. The really only good. thing that you can do, mainly that I can, is be funny as an <laughs> and get away with it. Well, we try. <laughs> we try. You know, you, you want to have I some wish, fun in life. Yeah. Yes, I wish we could give an example of your humor. Well, thanks. Maybe I wish another I could. time. Another time, absolutely. <laughs> I'd love to be on the show again. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Caruso. The Good Government Club Man of the Year was Buffalo Police Commissioner Joe Grimalia, who I had the honor to sit down with before dinner. Commissioner Grimalia, it's a pleasure and honor to be able to talk to you here on The Big Picture. What a terrible year you have had in the city and how you have coped with all of the terrible problems that have occurred here. It's amazing to us and I need to know how you've coped with it and how you're doing in the future. So it, it has been a challenging year. It's only been uh, a year and a couple of weeks, a year and a week since uh, I was sworn in as commissioner. And, uh, it, you know, it, a lot has happened. Um, our officers have been through a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the work that they've done through very challenging times. You know, we've had uh, officers that have been shot. We've had officers that have been shot at. Uh, we had a horrific racist mass shooting that put Buffalo on a map that we never wanted to be on. Um, you know, and then weather events, a horrific blizzard. But, you know, through it all, I uh, I kind of I cope with it uh, by seeing the work that everyone in the department and the city is doing. Um, it is uplifting to see how hard they work to get us through terrible times, and we have to lean on one another. I know that you've been uh, asked and, and talked to other places in the country, even into Washington, because of the experience that you've had and using the experience to help other, other police uh, units. You know, I, I've very privileged to have this platform, to have this position, to be able to try to do some good, try to leave it better than I found it. Um, and, and because of such a horrific situation that occurred here, that took me to Washington uh, to testify in front of Congress um, and, and, you know, put a, an opinion out, um, you know, something that I feel would make the our community safer. Um, I stand behind what I said there. Um, you know, and it's, I, I think, you know, in a position like this, you have to use it wisely and you have to be very careful with, uh, with how you occupy this seat while I have it. I know that there's been a lot of emphasis during your, while you were commissioner and before, on community policing. And I think you've learned a lot and shown a lot as an example in this community how it can work. You know, I, I, I look at uh, our job in two different facets. If we want to reduce violent crime, if we want to reduce crime, it's, it takes a, a two-prong approach, two pillars, if you will. One of those pillars is a very strong community policing model that's building bridges, maintaining bridges with community, with our youth, uh, getting out there, working together, having our officers network and engage. It's a prevention model. But there has to be another leg to that. The other leg is the enforcement model, and we have to... We have to let our officers do their work. We have to make arrests. We have to get guns off the street. We have to uh, you know, do our best to lower our crime numbers. 
and you have to focus on the right people, and that's a very data-driven approach. It's uh, we know who the players are, and we need to make sure that we're very careful to go after the right people. We don't want to go back to the policing models of, um, you know, swarming neighborhoods and grabbing everybody in sight. We know that that harmed neighborhoods, and it didn't do uh, any good at all. Um, it just caused a lot of bad relationships. So, you know, we have to be very focused on what we're doing, but you can't have one leg without the other. You can't do all enforcement activities. Um, you're going to collapse the community, and you can't do all community work because there's people that don't want to network and engage with our officers, and those are the ones that unfortunately we're going to have to, uh, uh, you know, make arrests on and, and take to jail. Well, I think um, one of the emphasis has been trying to get guns off the street. And which is so important to everybody and to our safety. And on the other hand, I know that this, some of the laws have hampered you, your ability. So there's got to be a way to work around it because, as you pointed out, getting guns off the street is a priority. It, it absolutely is. Uh, the, you know, the, the more work we do to lower our gun crimes, our gun violence, a lot of other things will fall into place. So it, it's, you know, laws have to change, things have to change, but. Uh, you know, the one message I try to convey to our officers is we can't be worried about the noise in Albany. We can't be worried about the noise of, of uh, you know, the legislature, the, the politicians arguing over, um, you know, bail reform and other things. We have to do our job because the moment that we um, don't do our job and don't do it the right way, then we will become the focus of, well, the system's not working because you're not doing your job the right way. So uh, I, I'll, I'll do that for them. I'll... You know, I'll make the arguments. I'll, uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll say what needs to be said on that regard, and you know, we just have to focus on doing our jobs and, and making our community safer. Now, one of the reasons I know that you are so successful and that you have been done, done such a good job and been such an exemplary person is because uh, you have a wonderful wife. Who, <laughs> <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> who has stood by you and worked with you. Uh, all these years, and who is a very, very professional and experienced attorney in her own right. She is. She uh, she makes me better on a daily basis. So um, she uh, she holds me to task, um, keeps me accountable. But you know what? She's also the rock of the household. Um, you know, she really does a lot of work at home. She does a lot of work with the family, with the kids. Um, you know, she's understanding uh, and realizes that I have a, a time-consuming, busy job. And you know, while I have the privilege again to hold this seat, I I, I couldn't do it without uh, a, the base at home. Uh, we hope she's going to watch this. Um, I'll, I'll tell her all about it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Commissioner. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Grimalia. If you would like more information, go to goodgovernmentclub.com.